here it comes. Here it wow. comes. Oh, the electric, the electric factory's here. What's going on? How are you? Oh man, What's this guy's coal burning power here. He's might be nuclear actually. <laughs> coal fire, What's man. That's how we get most of our power, you know. Welcome to the you. Barbarian Hour. Hey, thanks, Jared. How are you? Good. How you been, man? You've been a busy man. Yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, been working actually. While, while I was waiting, I was actually I'm in a master's program right now doing school. Uh, so I was writing a school improvement plan, and uh, I got real bored and I got excited about being with you guys. Um, I got to spend a lot of time with Zeb over the last couple of years. And do you remember the first time we met? I was at Burnett's and that guy pulled in with yeah. his kids and he got out and he was like, he was a tattooed up guy yeah. and he's like, get me out here. He wanted to murder his two kids. Who was that guy? He's, he's uh, been my assistant coach for, for, <laughs> well, he ran our youth club forever. And then his kids came through and they were tough as nails, but they were, uh, they were as wild as him. And he was, he drove up, we drove up in the RV and uh, man, he was just like, let's get me out of here. But yeah. he's a knowledgeable dude. He's fun. Aren't his kids like Walker and Texas Ranger or something like that? <laughs> Jake and Dallas. Jake and Dallas. There you That's go. Right. I, I was and close. It, I was you were close. close. I, was, I was right there. I do have a, a Walker on my team and I call him Walker, Texas Ranger. I do. I it's it. pretty awesome. I love everything about that. I know you'd do that. So did you guys camp out front of Burnett's or, what, or sleep in the RV or what did you guys do? So it was in Milan and, um, yep. and some of the kids would sleep in the inside of the facility and um you know sam drove up and we slept in the uh in the rv and i didn't even know he had his little daughter with her she was in the rv the whole time <laughs> hanging out so i go to go to the rv to to go to sleep and i'm like no chance i'm sleeping there so i knocked on Burnett's door up <laughs> in his rv late at night like hey uh hey snaggletooth can i come into your place please <laughs> I forgot they had a camper up there from, well, I remember. Or forever, dude. Right. Forever. And it was like our Keystone dad would bring it. Yep. It was awesome. And it was like, they were like, it was like a NASCAR camper. Yeah. It was a person, they took this car to like a NASCAR. Everywhere. And, yeah. Yeah. And of course the Burnett's, you know, I mean, the Burnett's, whenever there's, listen, there's going to be two things left in this world after the, like a nuclear fallout. It'll be Burnett's and Bergman's cockroaches and Twinkies, right? Those two other things, but they're just like so tough. They're so tough and gritty. It's just like, and they're mutants to me. Snaggle too. Yeah, they are. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you. He went to Clarion with a uh, several guys who corrupted me growing up from Robinson. So Justin Gazimka and Brian McCarthy, and then like Bernard Nimmons and and some of those guys, and they all lived in the same house with Kurt Angle and. They all have all kinds of stories that, you know, we can't talk about on air because Eric was never a part of them. He was, you know, because he was a no, good guy. No, no, no. But no, uh, they, no. they have some unbelievable stories from back in the day in Clarion. Man, I can't imagine. So, so well, I love what do you guys do, man? I, I, I love the, I've been following and I, uh, I'm a little late to the game here in Rockfin and a little late to the game in podcasting in general. Um, I, you, I you did a little bit a over job. quarantine, right? I did. Vawa, right? I did some Vawa stuff, but I'm a little late to the game. Like really when I drive, I usually put on a, a book like a, you know, David Audio Baldacci book. book or some type of book and listen. And now when I travel and I'm driving all over the place, I put on podcasts and I, and I peruse, which I love. Nice. Nice. There's some How good ones out there. Some real good wrestling ones. Degrees. I'm coming so, for degrees. I'm coming so, a lot of degrees. These are my two. Uh, it's just, uh, and then this is my wife's. And then this one, this is my favorite one. This was uh, my son, my first son, Tyler Speedbump, who you know. That's Fairview Elementary School Certificate of Promotion because we weren't ever sure if all of, you know, the first one through, we knew we were being good parents because he got through sixth grade. We did good. He did it. Where are... The two degrees from the, your, your, they're all the same. Where are you all, where are your degrees from? So uh, my wife and I, my wife and I, Mickey, her name, she played lacrosse at George Mason. I wrestled at George Mason. So we got our bachelor's there. And then master's, my first master's is from George Mason as well. And, How many of those uh, you got? I'm in my second one now doing school leadership. Nice. Hey, I have a teacher leadership master's. 
Yeah. Where's yours you. from? George so, Mason? No, my, my first master's is in educational transformation. Um, it was just kind of a kumbaya enough to get the bump, but it was really expensive. And now I'm doing it through American College of Education. I'm really liking it, um, it but it's a, a third of the price. Maybe a it's crazy, price. isn't it? Yeah. Crazy. All, all online, but it's, yeah. it's good stuff. Good um, so, yeah, Mickey and I met. She was a lacrosse player. She coaches lacrosse now and a bunch of the wrestlers and a bunch of the lacrosse players we all cross-pollinated and uh, and got married so. <laughs> okay okay so did you go to robinson i did so did did she go where did she go she went to fairfax high school which our where we live now and i live in the house i grew up in we bought it from my folks uh 15 years ago but we went from our first home from high school to college well, even preschool within three miles of our childhood home. So we're real local. Wow. Doesn't happen very much here in Northern Virginia, but we are, we're the epitome of local. And she actually teaches at the, at Fairfax high school now where she went. Wow. And your dad, did he coach you then? He did. He, That's um, awesome. so he um, was a coach and couldn't make any money being a teacher and a coach back in the day. And he was in like Newport news, Virginia, which was either you were uh, a Navy seal or you worked on the shipyards. Uh, it was pretty rough where he went, where he was teaching. And then he became a laborer and worked his way up through. Um, and he's still working full time doing development and construction. And uh, he coached our youth club. And uh, man, we had some hellacious youth club teams and everybody came to my dad's club. That's and awesome. then, uh, and then he, um, and then he had a TV show and then he did the broadcasting announcing too. So He's a, he's a pretty good one to emulate, and we 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 still do stuff together. It's fun. That's okay. awesome. So so, Bryant Jason Bryant's from Virginia Beach area, right? He's from uh, what Pocosin? Pocosin, yep. Yeah. So how far was that from where your dad was? Newport. Oh News. man, it was spitting distance. It was probably fifteen miles. Were you ever around there the same time that Jason was, was cause Jason's younger than you. He's much but, younger. I, I lived there. I was born there cause my okay. dad was coaching and then he was doing work at William and Mary at the same time. And, um, but I only lived there until I was probably seven months old. So no, no Jason Bryant connection no. early no. on. Nope. You guys just, you just croon each other upon the mics at the NCAD once. We do. And he's been, uh, I mean, he's, he's so stinking knowledgeable and he's, he's got a great voice and, and his, you know, just his syncopation, the way he does it is so good. And he's, he's one of my guys who has uh, put me under their wing. And when somebody asks, Hey, who do you want to be with you? We, we work together and he says me and we have a blast. Yeah. You call the worlds with who is the Scottish guy that you call the worlds with John Cullen. Yeah, there's a murder at Burger King. He's a trip in charge. <laughs> so he was on the world, like the uh, Scottish world team for Taekwondo. So it just does the grappling and the, uh, and the contact sports. And once you get into the, the, those, that arena, they bring him in because Olympics, they don't want you just to be a wrestling guy when you're doing stuff for the Olympic Games. Now you can do NBC and that stuff, but they want somebody who can do multiple sports. So he fell into it and he's an unbelievable human being. Yes. He, he know much does about not know, He does not know wrestling holds. No, he doesn't. The grab go behind. <laughs> oh, he he's got the say go behind. He, I would, I, he could get away with go behind. Yeah. No, he's got to grab him. And then he grabbed him and turned him over. I believe his back was uh, in some way it was near the ground and he got some points <laughs> through that. I don't know how though. <laughs> Yeah, he called them. <laughs> Dude, you called the you called the match of the century. The match. Uh, the okay, our match, our the match of the century when Snyder won. Yeah, and it won us the world championships when he beat Sajulayev. You called that match, and I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> I know him. It's like when I wear the Lauren Louis shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. With a headlock when she was down. I'm like, wow. I know her. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Um... I was supposed to be impartial and I was like sitting about, and I was trying to talk. Oh, and Snyder's doing a great job. Like so excited. It was amazing. 
Did you call the back hook one when he got back hooked? In no, the- no, I uh, that was in Budapest, right? And yeah. I didn't, I didn't go to that one, uh, but I did Kazakhstan last year and split between because now it's so stinking long. It's nine days, and Jason was like, "I can't announce twelve hours a day for nine days. So I need somebody." Um, so he, every other day, he would go prelim to the semifinals. And then I would do the prelim to the semifinals. And then he does all the finals because he's the guy. Will you be in Tokyo? No. No, but we're going to do Oslo because it's the same year. I didn't, I, uh, so I'm kind of, I guess I'm in USA Wrestling. I'm number three right now. Uh, you know, Jason. I was uh, Jason, then Dort, Mayab, okay. um, and then Jason. Had, they, they've been doing a lot of the events. And for a long time, you know, it was Sandy and 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 AL Scott and Casper, got Casper, and after Ed, not passed. a little bit, a lot. Yeah. So you know, I'm I I uh, I've been grinding through it and trying to find different events to go to and kind of making making my my name as well as I can. Where did you get your start? You said your dad did TV. Did what? Like, how did you get your start? Um. So nine, I was doing my work study at George Mason and I worked in the athletic ticket office. And at the time uh, they did all of the athletic management and the women's volleyball announcer bailed one afternoon. And so they said, can you do it? And I was like, of course, not realizing. So I went and screamed and yelled and act a fool, but that person never got their job back. So I did uh three and a half years of volleyball, men's and women's. Then it went to lacrosse and uh, soccer and the different sports. And then once I graduated, I started doing wrestling at Mason American and University of Maryland. And then the Southern Conference and uh, the Eastern, the, the um, not the EWLs, but the, uh, the Eastern Conference, the one that with that was down with Gardner Webb and mm-hmm. and um, and then the Matt Jam the East Regional, you mean East Regional? I couldn't. couldn't yeah, think it was of the like name. Delaware State. Yeah. It was Slippery Rock. No, wait, no, was Slippery Rock in that or the EWR? They were. They were, they were in the, that region. They were East. They were first before they got dropped. The East and, Region. Uh, and and I got heckled a little bit because one year it was during spring break. Nobody in the stands. It was two heavyweights in the constellations. They weren't going to nationals. So I put on music really low and uh, the NCA person who was watching came over and was like, you can't play music during wrestling. Mind you, there was nobody in the stands and the whistles were just, I mean, you might as well have been sleepy. So I thought I'd never announce again, but uh, I've been fortunate. That's crazy. That's a good journey, man. That's a real good journey. So you've called worlds, you've called the world championships. And it's crazy how you go from announcing to call an action. I love it. I think it's great. I think you do a great job at it. I, I mean, you saved the Sad July match for me because the grab, throw down, get the round. You know, I, it like kind of, yeah, kind of blows up my uh, spot. It blows up wrestling spot. You know what I mean? But I get what yeah. they're doing. They need like a utility to judo, a person who can do karate or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Like do a bunch of stuff, maybe even a boxing. I don't, you know what I mean? You don't know. It, combat sports combat sports yeah right absolutely. yeah just in general you've been yeah. doing a lot of these cards right i have um so i for the uh, some of the flow ones i've been doing i did the rtc cup in cincinnati yeah josh our boy josh was yeah. there with you right? he was awesome yeah he was, he was the king of the mopper man he was yeah, he's rocking, killing it He's a super, uh, he's awesome. And what you guys are doing with the new facility and he just wants to get, re- he loves wrestling. You guys just love wrestling. It's awesome. Um, but so I've worked a little bit with, with different organizations. So I have a little studio now and I cut the, um, the introductions pre-show. And so I can watch it from home. Um, Is that then, what you did last night? I, I thought so, I heard your voice. So, so last night um, I had cut them earlier and then, so I had cut all the ones for last weekend early and then okay. it went to hell in a handbasket really fast. So I had to change some of that. Um, and then for Wednesday, they had some singlet colored 
differences. So I had to cut them all again. And, uh, and then I just send them out and it's, it's actually, it's, it's worked out and, and their production value is pretty doggone good. So they, they, uh, they, you know, plug it all in and, and it, people are real jealous that I'm there. And I'm like, yeah, it was really awesome. They don't have any clue that I'm not really there. I was about to text you. That's like you're like you said you're busy Tuesday. I'm like, what? He's not there, is he? <laughs> yeah. So confused. Can we, can we get a sample? Can we get a little? Can we get a little sound bite of our own? Maybe I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. We have Jared Opfer and the man Zeb Zebulon Miller on the call. Are you ready? That's it. Oh, do. we're stealing that. That's our soundbite. You good. just got to know that right now. That that could that could be like the 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 intro. Like we've That's got it. like a, like an industrial intro, kind of like they're cutting steel, and then there's that one. I like it. I like it. So, Thank Jared, you. did you did you go to Wyoming? No. Where did you grow up? I'm from from Ohio. I'm uh about what forty miles east of Zeb. Uh, in Sandusky, so and then we right by the Kenton. barn, right by Milan. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, fifteen minutes down the road from Milan, there, right but on Lake Erie. Wasn't there an opfer who went to Wyoming? <sighs> Years ago, I, I mean, I don't know the I answer could, to that. It, when I saw your name and I've seen it a lot, I was like, "Is that the same guy?" And I no, I wrestled at Kent was. Um, um, I have to look that up. I don't know. Maybe Very Wyoming. Cool. I don't know. I don't know. There was an opfer at. And, okay. Just real quick background on Jared Opper. Okay, talk to me. I believe Jared was, were you Ohio's eighth state champ, seventh state champ? What were you? Um, Seventh, four-time state champ? Ninth. He was Ohio's ninth four-time state champion. And if you don't know, the the company he was in at that time would have been Jim and Jeff Jordan. Would have been Eric Burnett, if if you've ever heard of him. Yeah. Um, Willie Weinberg. Good Irish guy. (laughs) <laughs> Willie Weinberg, he's still around. Is he a Fairfield coach? Coaching but yeah, prodigy. Yeah, yeah. So I see oh, him yeah? around. But uh, was it Dan Zimmer? Was that the first uh-huh. four-time state champ in Ohio, Jared, from um, Columbus to Sales? Yeah, it's all. Oh, Zimmer. Mark Zimmer. Zimmer. Yeah, Mark, yeah Mark, Zimmer. Zimmer. Mark Zimmer. Mark Zimmer. That's it. Uh, and then you know, obviously, <clears throat> Jared Upper. So, oh, Johnny McGee. Johnny, Johnny McGee, McGee, JUCO national he, champion. Bad dude. Yeah, we've had some pretty good uh, four-time state champions uh, in Ohio, and we've yeah. had some pretty good guys not win four state titles in the state of Ohio. So Jared is one of that. How many are there now, Jared? I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot now. I but. mean, I yeah, I lost track because it, it seems to happen. Was our last one D'Amelio? I believe it was D'Amelio, wasn't it? Sounds about right. And we won't have one for a while now, will we? Oh, no. Yeah, Look, right. Breaking the breaking the action. Yeah. Break. Uh, did you guys get your season in? <laughs> we did. We got our full season. It it um it paused right after like a week after our, our state tournament. But we Good finished pretty early into February. Good and for so you. So I man. got through the EIWAs last year and then Jason went to division threes and they were on the mat stinking warming up. Right. And pulled him off the mat. The kind of same weekend you guys would have gone. Mm-hmm. Right. It's crazy yeah. because the D2s were the same way, and I think they mm-hmm. were in South Dakota. So they had a real similar situation with D, uh, D2 and uh, D3. Were, uh, they were warming up and, like, hours away from competing, both of them. It's crazy. That's so yeah. wild, man. So wild. So wild. Um, so you wrestled okay. for Coach Romano then at – yeah, uh, Andresi uh, senior year was my senior or my senior year. Andresi took over. Yeah, but uh, we're from uh, yeah, so, so Nate Shear. Nate Shear is from our area too. Oh yeah, Nate. Nate's a good dude. Yeah, his uh, his brother and my brother wrestled together in high. They went to both went to St. Mary's. His younger brother went to my high school. Now he didn't coach at Heidelberg before WNL. Where did he coach? Was that Ohio Northern? Was he yep. assistant yep. there? Yep. Is that right? Yep. Yep. He's an awesome guy and. Now we have Ryan Riggs down here as well. And yeah, Ryan's going to do a great guy. job at Ferrum. Um, yeah. They're, they're good folks. Awesome. So Jer- Jared and I were four of the five years together at Kent state. Okay. I hosted Jared on his recruiting trip. Yep. We used to run track and wrestle and play football. We did all three sports against one another. He, he lapped me. We were just talking and... before we jumped on. He lapped me in the mile, I think in junior high. <laughs> okay. He's bringing up old stuff, but <laughs> 
we did, you know, we, we competed against each other and, you know, three sports for, for three years in high school. Well, you did, you didn't do track. I didn't do track. Did, no. You did, junior high, you did track. We competed against each other. And then they were, uh, I didn't know you guys won seven state titles in wrestling, by the way. Oh yeah. I thought it was yeah. five. I no, said that to your uncle the other day yeah. and Jared, so Jared's the oldest of four hazard and, uh, two of his three younger brothers were state champs for Sandusky St. St. Mary's. And then, um, oh, wow. The, the big Martino Floriani's on the line guys. Sorry for the interruption. Big Martin, big Martin ringing in on me right now. We got to, we had to, we had to pause him. Sorry. So, um, the uppers, all of them are state finalists. And then his brother, Troy was a three-time state finalist. And did he lose to Sergeant in the state tw finals twice? He went six and two against Sergeant and lost him both times in the finals. Ben Sargent's NCAA yeah. champion for Finley yeah. D2. So, and his brother lost to him tw twice in the state finals, beat him a couple times at the state tournament, I believe. Yeah. Something like and that. Other beat him in college. Beat him in college. And beat him in college. It beat him yeah. up, beat the brakes off him at the Eastern Michigan Open. So, the Opera family is, is uh, they are a long, proud tradition. Jared, not here. So, Jared's a four time state champ, Hazard, the only brother not to be on a state championship. Team, team, no kidding. Team, all the other three run seven state championship teams. See, that's the difference with the hazards. Um, we've all been state runner ups. I was a state runner up, my son was a two time, Tyler was a two time state runner up, and then Alex finished his senior year at heavyweight at, at, as a state runner up. So, we have we have one more. Justice is our final one, he's a sophomore this year, and you know, maybe this year, if he does it this year, I don't know what we'll do. We, our head will explode because we're. We're rocking right now, but it, our state is really just Northern Virginia. So you never know, right? No one will see the asterisk 20 years from now. Nope. It doesn't okay, matter. Hold hey. on. So wait, 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 wait. With that, you'll compete against Christiansburg if they're in your, who's, who's in your division? So we have six divisions plus one with our private schools. <laughs> it's, it's so like Virginia beach and Chesapeake, like all of those. And then we have really Northern Virginia, all the big schools. Christiansburg, Christiansburg is uh, 3A. We used to just have three, and then they went to six, and now it's it's a show. But seven. 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 Okay. 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 So it's Colonial Forge. They're in ours. That's yours. Because mm -hmm. I did a duel. I rode up from Christiansburg to them, and then I think Virginia Tech wrestled – Jeez, oh, Pete's Virginia Tech wrestled like Clarion or someone. I can't remember who they wrestled, but I covered the two duels. Right. It was kind of crazy. And I was like, and we went up because Christiansburg had a bus. But yeah, they had a nice bus back in, back in those days. Here's the real big question. Because Ohio is going to do what you guys do. And I don't know if you still do this. Ohio this year will move all three divisions to three Columbus area high schools. You guys are at a high school for the state championship. Did you wrestle at a high school for the state championship? I did not. We had a place called the Arthur Ashe Center in Richmond where they would just do triple A. And then the double A and single A would go down to Salem, Virginia, which is right near Virginia Tech. Um, but we started wrestling in high schools probably – my first year coaching, so 25 years ago, I think was the first or second year they did it in high schools. Triple A, single A and double A still did it at the Salem Civic Center down down yonder, down 81, almost as far as you can go to Bristol. And Nate says you guys like will wrestle day one at one high school and then day two at another or something crazy? Or it's happened, I guess, maybe not normally. But... Uh, it's happened the last two years. Oh, wow. What? I just wild. Why? When you had the round of 16 they would do them in two different places and then the next day semifinals combined would be on of. would be combined and then the finals on two mats um it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but I'm, I'm learning you know many years in that i can only control what i can and i can right. complain about it as much as i want but it's not going to change right and so uh this year VAWA, the, the group that I work with, with USA Wrestling, we're going to host the state tournament in Virginia Beach at this brand new convention center, which will be awesome. But Virginia Beach up until last week wasn't wrestling. So we were going to do everything 
in a place where they weren't even wrestling. So I really don't know. I'm, I'm ready at any day. Like they're doing a um, school board meeting right now. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if out of the blue, they just go, Oh yeah, you're done. It just, it could happen. And they don't yeah. know, they don't understand wrestling either. Right. I mean, that, that that's a big piece of it. Some of these administrators, Fortunately, right? a lot of them don't. And they're yeah. like, how do you do wrestling? And how do you do? Mm-hmm. And I say, well, how do you do basketball? And they go, well, what do you mean? I said, well, they don't say body to body. They say three feet. So if you can go three feet underneath the basket for 12 minutes, Right. Or you can wrestle for, oh, by the way, in Virginia, they went from a six minute match to a five minute match. So it's a one minute first period because one minute saves lives. Oh, wow. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't even know what to say at this point. Do you like it being in the high schools or not? Um, well, considering that our, we've hosted it um, probably six or seven times. And I, I will tell you, our high school, I, I mean, I don't know if you, you haven't been there, but it's big. I mean, it's the size of most colleges places. I mean, it's bigger than most universities in Virginia. So we have 4,000 plus students and we have, we can fit 7,000 people in, a, in our gym, 6,500. So oh, that's your high school gym. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not even, that's an arena. It is. And so it's when the same you size as the max center, Jared, it's the right. same size where right. we wrestled in college. Yes. Right. It's an arena. It's, no, it is. And so when you, and, and we're fortunate that we have great wrestling people at my school. Um, the athletic director is a former wrestler. My dad's in the area. All these people are in the area and we've combined to make it a, 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 an event where when we would go to other places, they didn't showcase the wrestlers. And I think the state tournament and any high school league, their goal should always be to showcase their athletes. And I know Ohio does an amazing job and like looking at Colorado and North Carolina and uh, Iowa and some of their state championships are, I mean, they make it an event. Uh, They make it so you will remember it. Um, And and I think a lot of places forget that piece that, you know, you want to, you want to make it cool for the guy who goes, Oh, and two, Hey, I wrestled in the state tournament there. I'll give a P give people a reason to watch, right. Make it the experience. Right. So I, wow, that's crazy. It's uh, so, so you're wrestling, right? And yep. your youngest, what weight you said? He's 138 this year. And uh, my oldest was again, two time state runner up at 145. And then my middle boy, he's 6'2, 270. Um, I think I seen him on your Twitter right there. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a large human being. And he's, uh, you know, he's at, he's not wrestling or playing football in college. He was all state football. Uh, lineman and and he's um you know he he didn't wrestle until sophomore year in high school and I said to him you know why and he goes because I never get to see my dad so I might as well and he and he was pretty and he's a good athlete and Tyler really good wrestler good athlete so justice has been hesitant to wrestle hesitant to dive and hesitant to play lacrosse because his mom is a you know, my wife is a dive coach and a lacrosse coach and I'm a wrestling coach. So he wanted to do other things. <laughs> do you believe him? No, how long, heck no. How long, how long have you been the head coach at Robinson? How long have you been teaching? So um, I graduated college in 1996 and I became the wrestling coach at Robinson in 1997. So I've been there. This is year 25. So 25 years. How, what is the retirement system there? When can you, can you do 30 and be done? I, I could. And um I got in in the, the last two years of the good retirement system. So I can go 50, 30, like 50 years old, 30 years. I'll probably end up going to 53 um, because uh, that, you know, that, that just makes more sense for me for retirement. But it's, it's a pretty, Fairfax County is, has got a great retirement, even for the, the newbies now. I mean, they got to work a little longer but we have a supplemental insurance as well as the Virginia retirement system and, a, and, a re, and, and our, uh, and a separate pension as well. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. We'll be doing a, right about 95% of our, of our final salary nice. uh, when we retire. So what? Good. Yeah. 95%. Pretty, yeah. 
I will be at 35 years, 66%. There wow. you go. Because it was 66%. I was done at 53 at 66%. Yeah. And now I think I got to go to 59 and a half, 60, whatever. So if I, I could be wrong, but yeah, and I think because I have to go to 35 or 60, whichever comes first. So I was initially done at 53, though. I would have been 30 years. 53 and of course if you know anything about me i'm done at 53 then right done and done done and done rv drive the country right <laughs> yeah, like that, yeah. that would have been the deal at 53 but now i had these two little kids so it's, i gotta go to 59 anyway because the one dude will just be turning 18 right and and we were real fortunate mickey stayed home for 11 years with our kids so she'll be teaching a little longer she'll probably go to 25 years so i'll 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 finish coaching in the next couple of years and then uh, maybe who knows. I, I've been saying that for five years now and then I just love it so much. I come back uh, and I'm, and I'm real selfish about my guys. I don't want anybody else to come in and do something different kind of micromanaging, but uh, at least I know. Right. Um, yeah. But so you- I, I might, and I might apply at another school district out of Fairfax County. Once I reach my retirement in Fairfax County, uh, which is it 25 years this year, I could do that and then do my last three years as an administrator because Virginia retirement system is your best three. Nice. Yeah, that's what ours is. It's your best three. It's the, it's the average of your best three. So, so Zeb mentioned he has little ones, right? And you have older ones. What, what do you have to say to Zeb on that? What's some tips? Uh, you know, uh, just the tip. <laughs> um, stop now, brother, because I, I was... It, it, my one of my best friends had his, you know, second kid at 42, 43 years old, 44 years old. And then we were doing the math out uh, and, and we were just like, oh, my goodness. We're, when, when my kids are married and having kids, you're just going to be getting them through high school. And he, he did. He, he had a, kind of a few expletives for me. Uh, but just, you know what? Th- th- I don't think there's anything better than being a dad. And. And there's nothing better than being a, a coach and coaching your kids. Uh, I wish I could go back 22 years ago. Well, really, what, 17 years ago when Tyler started and maybe do it a little different and coach, it, coach him a little different. But, you know, you can't go back. But enjoy it. Ferg, man, always going to be what it should have cut us, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Trying to enjoy it, man. We're trying. We, we – we just got to get, I just want them to enjoy it is the biggest thing, creating a positive association. Like I want them to enjoy it. I want them to have fun. My one son's a real piece of work. So I got, I got three of them. Yeah. My son Thomas is just, and we go to this club, bomber wrestling club with this guy, Jeff Varney. And they're so nice to my kids. And I want to just be like, be really mean to the one at least because he, <laughs> he deserves it. But you know, it's just like anything, man, you, you just, you got to find a happy medium and you can't let it become like unhealthy or toxic. And I'm trying to do that. And I let other people try and coach them. Other people are coaching them largely. I, I'm like this dude that like shoots videos and then occasionally I'll show them something like yeah. I, I, there's right. got to be dads that are like, why is this guy videoing so much stuff? And it's, it's like, so much fun. You never, you, I you wish I'm never going to get video. it back. I'll no. never get it back. And that's my time machine. And a lot of people don't understand that. You know, like you had footage of your boys when they were little, man, you'd, you'd watch it over and over and probably get a water AI, but it's like, we have this, this is what we have. I'm learning, they're learning their first stuff. And it's like the most exciting thing. And I'm video, I video a lot of it. And I think that a lot of these people are like, why they have to be. I mean, I don't know a lot of them. They're really nice people. They're super nice to my kids, which they should not be nice to the one, but they are. They're so, and the kids are all really nice to them. The one they're kid just hoping was, to get on a video, man. It, yeah. It's just, I don't know if they No, I don't, I don't think they know who I am. So that's really cool too. You know that's what cool. I mean? Like, cause it, you see how people are right. When they accept you for, if they don't know who you are, that's a really cool thing. And these people are so accepting. They don't know who I am. And that's cool. Like one guy saw me the other day at Jared's event and he's like, one of the dads, he's like, what are you doing here? Just, just kind of hanging out. And I was like, oh, well, I work for him. And he's like, oh, really? Oh, really? I said, wow. Yeah, I work for him. He was like, oh, okay. But you know, like this guy, he doesn't know who I am and he's, he's, they're awesome. They're just good people, man. I, 
I really like that. Okay. That's the cool thing about doing what I do too, is uh, people don't know that I coach. And so I walk into an event with my guys and, you know, we, we really pride ourselves in very rarely being in Virginia and I'll walk in there. Oh, you're announcing today. And I'm like, no, I got my team here. And then we typically do fairly well. Not great. Um, but uh, they're like, oh, well, you guys know how to wrestle. I was like, well, yeah, I love wrestling. Like, that's what I know. Is this, I don't know a lot, but I do know a little bit about wrestling. So after uh, 25 years, I'd hope something, right? Yeah, right. And, my, you know, I, I, I started doing it out of the womb. I mean, my dad was a coach. It's that's one awesome. of those things. He taught me how to how to coach. And, um, you know, I tried to make my own path. And then I still call him daily. That's awesome. Hey, dad, watch the videos. So, so he goes and takes notes on the videos and sends them to the guys. So we're, we're, we're all a team. That's awesome. So, Jared, you have kids? Uh, girls. So, yep. Uh, four girls. And I came from all boys as Zeb, as Zeb mentioned. So, but, uh, yeah. wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. Same, no. scenario, same scenario. You know, one, one needs a little roughed up and one's too sweet. So, but yeah, Christ's good. Uh, awesome. and I coach also a uh, small yep. school. So, so same. my, our professor in this la in, in this, uh, course that I'm in right now, he's at Revere, Ohio, Richfield. Yeah. So, okay, you remember Michael Jordan hit that shot against the Cavs? Yeah. Against Craig Elo, it's called the yeah. shot. Yeah. That was in Richfield. The, the that was the, Yes. Against Craig Elo trying to guard him. Yep. And it was like when Richfield he really Carlson. got, like, started to become a killer in the in the playoffs. Right. That was against the Cavs. That was at the okay. Richfield Coliseum. Beautiful. Since, you know, a lot of these teams, they don't, they play, like, not where they are. Auburn like Hills Pros, or whatever. Not in sure. Boston, right? Like, right. Auburn Hills, right? Detroit moved all those teams downtown, but, but yeah, like that, that is, that's Richfield and it's Revere. So, um, okay. That's where the Scavuzzo, Jim Scavuzzo is from Revere. Uh, oh yeah. Jared, that yeah. Guy he met this weekend. Yeah. And one of my brother, brother's college teammates, he was the big Penn, big 10 freshman of the year. Great guy. Really? Uh, yeah. Big 10 freshman of the year. Um, hazard. You talk sure. about graduate school, second master's degree, head coach, Globe trotter announcer, three time dad. Talk about all this stuff. How do you find time for all of it? How do you do it? How do you balance it? Uh, it's it's um well well first of all, I have people in my life and especially my wife who allow me to do it. Right? I mean, if if she was a, a normal human being who wanted me always around I wouldn't be able to do a lot of it but she's my she, you know she's a big my biggest fan so y you make it work by creating buckets and I and I create a schedule I don't typically do much announcing during from from November to February because uh, typically that's when I spend time with my the team that, that I'm a part of right so with Robinson um, and then you know I'll drive up on a Saturday like I'll leave it 8 to 8 p.m. on a Saturday or on a Friday night after work or 3 p.m. on a Friday night and get to where I'm going and then drive or fly home and uh, and you know go to work the next day I mean we go with a lot you know a lack of sleep and I, I honestly wasn't going to go for this second master's degree because I I I was sure that we were going to be done for this year so I figured well we're not going to be able to coach this year so I'll do this one year program, get it over with so that I can have it. Is it 30 hours? It's 30 hours. Yeah. You're a maniac. But five week classes. So five week classes, it's real rigor, uh, you know, high rigor and uh, we, we get it done. But with the announcing, so I, I work for great people. Uh, Frank Pabellizio up in, in New York. He's been, you know, a huge champion for, for what I do and flies me up and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get on a 6 a.m. flight and go to work uh, or, or, or go late the next night. It's, it's been a really great way to make a little extra money, but it's also been a great way to spend time with like-minded wrestling people. And we're all crazy in the head, right? We're all sick and, and, uh, and we get each other. And there's just so few people who get wrestling people uh, and, and just, the work ethic and the way that we are and the sick humor and 
the, the way we hold ourselves. Um, and I love to spend time with wrestling people and we're all the same. I don't care if you're in, uh, in, in, you know, Northeast New, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Kazakhstan, China, you know, Russia, we're all sick, demented human beings who do something that we love. You have and, to be, you yeah. have to be to a degree. Like my kid the other night wanted to quit. I said, Hey, we're here. You're not quitting. We're not going home. And I think that if you start that early and Hey, maybe that's something where I'm falling short. Maybe that's something where was that? Maybe you should have taken him home. Maybe he just stuck with it. Right. Like I'll live with that. I'll live, you know, I'll live with that because I know that's what my wife would have said. My wife would have been like, we're not leaving. Right. Cause one of them told, uh, told her one that she's like, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to wrestling tonight. She's like, yeah, your dad paid for you to sign up for wrestling this year. You're going all year. She yeah. told him that, you know what I mean? Like, and when you have someone like that, who's on board, right. We got one of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got one of those. Uh, yeah, he, he's, uh, Jared's got one of those his, his mom's, uh, so Jared was coached by his uncle, Jude Roth. It's his mom's younger, youngest older, brother. younger brother, youngest brother, youngest oh, so brother. Holidays for you guys were rough too. Oh yeah. Oh, it was nuts. Yeah. Let's go <laughs> three, watch the video. Yeah. Three younger brothers. Yeah. yeah. My dad, you know, but go ahead. It's crazy though. The, the, I do want to say, hold on. Like wrestling. Stop right there. Move your head a little bit. If you look at the barbarian, no, the other way. It looks like you have a, 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 a halo on, man. The, bar, when, the oh. barbarian are just oh. perfectly over your. Look at that. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. Look at that. I always say Zeb, Zeb has a voice of an angel. And then that's right. Why you're trying to get on. He's like, oh, the true voice of an angel, right? That's so cool. You are. No. You are. You and old Jason Bryant, man. What a great, great combination. Hey, I found right. a Virginia Duels duel from like okay. 01. Yeah, we Kenny Parker, he's in the background he too. Calling, he is calling the high school division. Yeah, him and him and another guy are dueling, like how you guys do it, man. And you guys really do a nice job because I think that the biggest complaint I have is I can't pay attention to everything. Right. And I'm trying to process so much because then I go back and I ask the coaches and ask the guys questions. You guys really help me out in that situation. I'm there. I am not blowing smoke, man. And there's times where. I'm watching it on a delay, but I'm hearing it from you guys in the, the tunnel. Right. Cause I'm not always on the floor for all that stuff that I do. And um, man, you guys, you and Jason just do such a fabulous job. You got, he has got such a deep voice. Yeah, Your sounds right. amazing too. Yeah. We, we, we I, balance each other well. And everybody on the NCAA tournament needs to buy his guide that he does every year. Oh my God. He gives it to me. It's, it's the best. So comprehensive. Uh, no, I mean, he, he spends, uh, he makes maybe a penny on it, right? Because he spends so much time on it, but it is the best resource. So my dad has been going to the NCAA tournament every year for the, with all of his William Mary buddies for the last 40 years. What well, they do this thing called the JID pool. It's called the John is dead pool. Uh, I can't really talk about what JI, who John was, but I will tell you that he was a administrator at William and Mary back in the day. I shouldn't say that because people don't know that but uh, oh well uh but he wouldn't tell these guys about the book and they and so he would win all the time because he had the book don't to win your secrets no and, uh, yeah it was awesome but um so you know he he's been the only year he's missed is the year that um, um almost 24 years ago when my i got married on ncaa championship weekend and my dad was like why are you doing it this weekend, Mickey? And she goes, ah, he won't want to go. Yeah, I have, ah! I've, I've missed almost every anniversary since, but uh, but we're all good. Um, but yeah, it's that comprehensive book. And then looking back, we were talking about the Virginia Duels. The other guy is Ken Berger, and he's done a bunch of Olympics. Um, Ken Berger did the 2012 Olympics. Did 20, yeah, he did 08, Yeah, 12. I was there. It was awesome. Yeah, and he was Ed Alverdi's music guy. And then he became the announcer and he's a Virginia beach guy. We all grew up together. He was a Marine and he lived in Northern Virginia. And so he's another champion for, he was Jason's mentor and my mentor doing, we do triathlons together and wrestling together and beat the streets together. He's the main voice for beat the streets. And uh, so we, we, we have this kind of, we call it the Virginia media mafia. It's uh, Jason, 
Well, it's Ken started it, Jason, myself, Tim Foley, Eric Olinowski, um, now Earl Smith, um, and and uh, and even Christian Piles uh, is a part of the mafia, right? All these Virginia guys who are involved in wrestling. It's it's not always the greatest state to watch wrestling in, but we do love our wrestling, and you know, Dad's a part of that as well. So it's it's a it's a good family of people who work well together and we we make sure that we uh support each other and if we can't get a job somewhere we push it to the to the to the other virginia folks and you make it fun right we do it, that that's awesome we do. so crazy hey with uh, robinson yeah how many iron man okay first off how many virginia state champions not uh do you have team any team titles um four under you how many four so all four alternatives we have seven we have seven total we want 80, 80 81 85 11 13 14 and 18 okay and those are all tournament titles yes and then have you ever did they do a duels we we were second in 90 my senior year and then they stopped doing them we don't do a dual tournament anymore so which, you don't have to do so yeah. you've won four turn, tournament titles as the head coach. You're the big division. You're the biggest school division. Yes. And there's there's not a bigger division, so it's probably it's probably the toughest division. Um, year in year out would be my guess. Yeah, the last several years, I think three A and four A have probably been the best with the top individuals with Christiansburg and New Kent and Falkier. They've had some some awesome teams, but yeah, I, I would I would put us up against those guys. Okay, so your four-time champs under you, seven total before you. Uh, how many individual champions have you had slash finalists or something like that? Um, since I've been there, we've had 20 state champs. No, 21 state champs. We had one last year. Um, we've had uh, probably 40-some state finalists. Um one, you know, we've, we've, we've had a good run. And I, I think one of the things that we've done really well is that we focus our, our attention on the state tournament being one of the easiest tournaments that we go to. So we go yeah. to Ironman. Yeah, so Iron that BCDs. was that be my next question. Yeah. How many Ironman placers? Um, we went for five years and I think we had, I think we had five or six. Pretty good. That's pretty yeah, good. We were, we were, uh, that's really good. The one year after day one, we were in second and it was awesome. <laughs> it was like, I was taking pictures like, look at this. And then, uh, I think we ended up fourth or fifth that year, but it was still, wow. That was, that was, was that? That was, uh, 2014, 13 or 14. Uh, so I would have been calling the finals. Yeah. We didn't have and, any finalists, but we had like wow. Jack Bass, Jake Pinkston, uh, Zach D. Pasquale, uh, Daniel Micah. Um, we had that year of our 14 wrestlers, eight of them went division to division one schools to wrestle. Wow. Dane Robbins, who was a, in, um, uh, Brooks Martino, who was at Penn, they were qualifiers, Tim and Dane. Brooks Martino is a qualifier at 57. Yep. Twice. Brooks Martino was tough. He was really good. Like really tough. And now that's the at- best guy you've ever had. Uh, I would say one of the best. Uh, yeah, I mean, because he was so smart. So he was like top of his class at Penn. Now he's at Cornell Med School. He was a, he was brilliant. He could hold a conversation. He could laugh. He could wrestle. He worked hard. Uh, probably speaks two languages. Probably, you know, he's a slayer of, of all slayers. He's, he's just, he's that guy. And um he could outsmart any of us. He was just smarter. But then, like Jack Bass was awesome, um, and uh, you know Jake and Dallas Smith were really, really good. They wrestled in college. Uh, we we've we've had some really great wrestlers come through, and I've I've been fortunate. Um, our school it, for a long time was in the top twenty five size schools in the nation, and it's a full IB school. Um, so international baccalaureate, we graduate 
of our 600 or no, of our 750 kids, we probably have 500 of them who are full IB that go to, they, they have their choice of schools to go to. Um, and people want to come to our school that move in for military or wherever. We're a magnet because it's such a great institution. We have good leadership within our, within our school as well. So it's easy. How far from DC? Uh, well, how far can you be to the? Let's say, is the Pentagon in? Is the Pentagon Arlington. in DC or Virginia? Arlington in Virginia. It's in Ar- so it's in Arlington. How fast yeah. can you be to, uh, like, let's say, like a Trump riot at the Capitol building? How fast can you be there? Um, if they're not blocking streets in Arlington and Alexandria, I could be there in twenty minutes. So where that like crazy stuff went down Capitol Hill. You could be there in 20. Yes. Wow. 20, 25 wow. Minutes. Yeah. And we talked to, to Tig last, right? Like last week oh, he was our guest it. and, and he down. talked a lot about um, anytime you're in DC, it's such a, it's such a destination place that people want to be. Because if you work in you know, the largest employer in America, the most powerful nation on the planet, largest economy is, is the federal government. Right. And that's the epicenter of it. Right. That's yeah. where it is. Yeah. And like a lot of our, our, our wealth is really concentrated in Northern Virginia, because that's where a lot of those people at least have a house. So and policymakers that's tend that, yeah. to keep their money. Policymakers tend to flow money, pork spend, if you will, to where they're going to be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Our, 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 what, what's, when we see recessions, besides small business in this area, it, we haven't seen much change in, in besides small business. Uh, it's been, it's been pretty steady. Um, you know, where we live, I live, like I said, I live in an old farmhouse in the house that I grew up in. My parents probably bought it for like $23,000 in 1976. And when people ask where I live, they go, Oh, wow. You live in Robinson's district. I said, yeah. I said, you know where the real big houses are. We live right across the street from them. Uh, we just have, our own little piece of property here. Um, but we're surrounded by lots of wealth and lots of power and lots of people who think that what they say should go. And I think my first 15 years of coaching, I listened to a lot of those people. And, and as I've gotten older, I, I, when you get seasoned on dealing with those type of people, I think it's, it's a nice thing to be able to uh, pick times to to, to coddle those folks and take time to sometimes tell them no. And they really don't like to hear no. No, they don't. No, they don't. I was talking to a kid the other day who is going to Cornell. Yeah. And he is from almost the opposite end of the spectrum. He is from Bellevue, Ohio, Justin Mays. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I go, do you realize where you're going? Uh, do you realize you're going to learn a lot about the world there? I said, do you realize you're from this blue collar gritty town and you are not going to that at all? Like at all. And, I, and, and, and you know, he's an intelligent kid. Obviously he's going to Cornell. I don't think he, I don't think he understands where, he, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he gets the, he's, he's going to a different world. Right. Cause where he's at, is directly next to Clyde, Ohio, where they make all the Whirlpool and a lot of the Ken, I believe Kenmore dryers and washers. And it's just, dude, it is just gritty blue collar folks that will fist fight you at the drop of a hat. He is, is, going, he rest- to- is he going to wrestle there. Oh uh, yeah. He's, he's going to Ithaca. Well, and, the, the and thing about their kid. team though, it- I tell you what, Rob Cole recruits a lot of those pretty rough, tough kids. I mean, compared to the whole university, I would say if you look at the spectrum of, of Ithaca, New York, and you look at the wrestling team, they have some, some thick neck, tough kids who, who aren't afraid of to, to be that. I mean, you look at Arusha, I mean, his dad, he's Bulgar, I tell you what, you know, he, he, he'll tell you, <laughs> uh, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and then uh, obviously the Dean family is, is, salt of the earth and the Diakamahala salt of the earth and the Richard salt of the earth family. So, uh, but then you got, then you got a, a long Island Palacio or a, right. a Northern California freaking nature nation. It's yeah. like, 
They're all over the place. They They're are. all over the place. They are. And True. They yeah. really are. If you think about it, I think uh, what Princeton has a kid on the team. His dad's a billionaire. <laughs> With a B. Yeah, I didn't say ba 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 ba. Yeah, B is in boy. And it just like when I hear this stuff, I'm like, oh my god. Wow. I mean, I could be wrong on the Princeton guy. Maybe he's only a couple hundred millionaire, but I mean, <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> right? Exactly. What would the like difference? one half of one percent of his wealth? Just and then I would be comfortable for the rest of my life. That's scary, right? Yeah. Right. And it's all you need. Hey, as as uh, uh, educators, you and your wife, what are the three boys? I know you got a sophomore in high school. But other two boys are in college. It was one at Lehigh, I wanted to say. He started at Lehigh and okay. he had had surgery. Um, academically, he was doing really well, but it just, it didn't fit him. And then he went to Old Dominion and wrestled there. And obviously we know what happened with that program. But uh, so he was at Lehigh and he loved, he, and it's hard not to love being there with Pat and, and John. Um and Brad, I mean, those, those three together, when they were together, were, were a pretty phenomenal group of people. So being, but, but the, 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 I guess the aim of it is you've got three boys, you're both educators. What is the, what's, what, how do you guide and, and what's the direction or how do you get them? You know, obviously you want them to be college graduates, you know, like my dad was a union iron worker. Right. Jared's dad was a home interior guy, right? Like we had blue collar parents, you know, my wife and I are teachers, right? right. So we're going to obviously stress education differently than my, my papa Ferd was an iron worker and my dad became an iron worker. All my uncles are pipe fitters. Sorry. One of them's a, sorry. Hold on. Steam Three fitter. of my uncles are pipe fitters. My dad's an iron worker. My aunt works for the city of Oregon, Ohio. Uh-huh. And then my other uncle is uh He's a doctor. I'm sorry. I should have brought that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? One of my uncles is a psychologist. <laughs> my dad's brother. My dad whose knuckles have never not drug on the ground. His dad, dad's knuckles never didn't never drag on the ground. One of, one of my uncles is a psychologist, Dr. Oh. Ken, a great guy. My uncle Kenny's a great guy, real funny guy, but like. Son of a sea cook, right? That's what my dad says he is. Son of a sea cook. Because yeah, like my whole yeah. family is they my my aunt was the travel secretary for Clinton White House. And my whole family is is I mean, if you if you look of left of center, you got to keep on looking and keep on looking. And then my dad's a, a developer construction worker who, you know, who's completely on the opposite end. And it's it's crazy. So we all have our diverse family backgrounds, right? I love it. I think it's the greatest thing ever, but like, I forget my dad told me this crazy joke. I go, why, why were you at the summer? My dad told him this. I was like, he like got real serious. And I was like, why are, why were you and your dad were iron workers? How do you have three butter brothers that are pipe fitters? He's like, well, oh, and he like starts going to this like long drawn out. And he's like, well, you know, my dad, you know, he didn't have much money. Well, he had money for my other three brothers. He didn't have money for me. And I'm like, well, your second oldest, your oldest brother's a pipe fitter. The guy after he's a pipe fitter. And then the youngest one's a, I'm like, and I didn't make, he goes, well, what happened was my dad ran out of money. He ran out of money for sex changes for them, for me. And I was like, what? I go, what? He goes, yeah, he was able to afford those three guys the sex changes to be pipe fitters. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm That's like, so why funny. would you tell that? What? what? And he's like, well, yeah, he, just, yeah, he ran out of money for me. He couldn't afford to send me to Sweden. Oh, my goodness. Or Switzerland or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I was That's like, awesome. You're, you're out of your mind. But no, it was like, you know, I, my grandpa was a pretty, you know, he, my grandpa was a D-Day. Oh, my wow. grandpa fought in every major battlefront of World War II. He was a, a, a amphibious landing craft guy. And then he was an iron worker for 50 plus years. So we're talking about a guy. The only time he ever talked about World War II was to me in an hour and a half video. Never talked about World War II. My dad was like, yeah, I never heard any of that. So imagine you, he, he was you asked, right? Yeah, it was fascinating what I heard. Like, I just couldn't believe it. And he just never, you know, spoken of those things. And it was 
it was wild. And that was, you know, a large reason why my family is what it is. And great guy. And his name's Ferd. So my son's named after him. Ferd, He's yeah. Ferdinand Joseph. My son's Ferdinand Joseph. My really super friendly, sweet brother is Ferdinand Joseph. Bernie, one of Bernie's really good friends. Yeah. My oldest brother, Ferd. And then our great grandpa. But what's the focus when you push the boys or guide them? So, you know, I, if I had to have my druthers when, when Tyler graduated from high school, I, I, I might have pushed him a different direction. Um, but even as a coach, I let, and some parents get mad at me about it, I let my kids and my athletes and my students make decisions. And he went on a visit when, when, we, when I used to announce the University of Maryland, he got to know Pat. And Pat, and Pat Santoro is one of the greatest men alive. And he always wanted to wrestle for Pat. And so he went on a visit and he was, he was sold. Um, and, you know, you, 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 let them, you let them make their own choices. Um, and, and we may do for the financial piece and, you know, we'll be paying it until we're 89, 90 years old, but it's okay because that's what he wanted. Um, then with Alex, so Alex was looking at Davidson for football and, and looking at, uh, some other places. And he went to Virginia tech and didn't love it. But on the way home, we stopped by, uh, James Madison university and the minute he got on campus, he goes, this is where I want to go. And it's been perfect for him. It's the perfect place. He's a international business and, and Mandarin Chinese major. That's what he wants to do. Um, you know, for our other one, uh, for justice, he says he's going to go to, I think it's PBU. And that's Parents Basement University. He doesn't oh. ever want to leave the house. Oh, uh, But uh, that'd no, be a he, hard no for me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, us too. Um, but, you know, our boys are at home right now. Uh, Alex left back for school today, but, you know, Justice likes his home. He likes, you know, now that he's in high school, he likes his brothers being, being at school so that he can run the roost. Um, but he's really coming to his own academically and, uh, and, and athletically and he's got himself a, a gal pal and uh, he's, he's, he's coming into his own. So I think when he, um, makes a choice to go to school, uh, you know, he, he's going to go to a place that, that probably, well, it's definitely not Ivy League, and it's a place where he can fit in and um, where, where Bs and Cs can get degrees, right? So, uh, you know, Alex, like my, my middle, type of guy, I'm not going to yeah, lie to you. Heck yeah. Alex got his first B this year ever in college, and he was so pissed off. He was so angry that he got a B in, in a class. And he couldn't figure out why. And I'm like, man, I, I don't even know if he's mine. You know, you got to play the game, brother. Uh, yeah, you do. But yeah, we, 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 any, any kid, uh, I think you have to let kids, you got to guide them and you got to say, you know, hey, I think, you know, you're, we had a, a, a young man years ago who his parents said, yeah, he's going to wrestle for the University of, I of Iowa. And I said, oh, no, he's not. You, you, no, he's not. He's, he's not going to, he needs to go to a division three or a small NAIA school where he can maybe start ever. And, uh, you know, he didn't go to the university of Iowa, but sometimes we got to uh, steer away from the, the, the parent colored glasses. Um, but we also have to let kids have reachable goals and dreams and try to do it. And if, I think if you, if you put the brakes on them too much, they uh they'll be bitter bitterness sucks yeah it's terrible i don't i don't know jared, if you guys have any uh, plenty jared uh yeah i'm not a real bitter guy but i there's oh, things yeah. i wish i could change but i understand that i do not possess the flux capacitor is what <laughs> makes time travel possible uh jared i have one more good one for him um shoot man shoot <clears throat> it is uh Man, you've conquered the pinnacle of wrestling as far as coaching. You know, obviously, you wish you could have a state final match back, right? You know, you didn't want a state title. But you have been top five at the Ironman. You've won four state titles in Virginia, big division. You've announced the match of the century. You've, you've done cards all over the world. 
D one NCAs. You've done it all, man. What what more is there to do between here and retirement for you? Where do you see yourself in five, ten, fifteen? Where do you see yourself? What what do you what more is there to accomplishment accomplish for you, Coach Hazard? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I am not a huge planner. You know, I I, I let I let it flow. Uh, I've said for a lot of years, I always want to be the person who. When it's time to go, I want somebody to say, Brian, you're done. You know, no harm, no foul. You've done what you needed to do. I, I would, of course, love to do the Olympic Games. I, I would love it. Um, you know, they're, they're coming to L.A. Uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to do the Olympic Games. Um, Coaching-wise, I'd love to – hire the next head coach at Robinson, somebody who I know is going to love the program as much as, you know, coach Epperly or, or coach Obold or myself. I mean, in 50 years of the school, there's only been three wrestling coaches, which is pretty cool. Wow. Um, yeah. There's only, you know, there's been three of us. Um, wow. And, uh, and so um, I, I'd like to be able to hire the next guy and, and support them. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, mow lawns like Forrest Gump at a college and, uh, and just be a part of, of, of helping a a college be successful. But, you know, I I think if, if you're asking me what my goals are moving forward for announcing or coaching uh, at almost 50 years old, I, I love what I'm doing right now. I love the fact that, um, that there is a demand for, for what we do. I think there is a, a, a big demand for creating an environment at events that where an announcer can make a difference. And, you know, um, but I think in, in, in the grand scheme, the Olympics would be, would be something that would be pretty awesome. Teacher, do you want to, are you moving on to administration here after this next degree? Is that the. Yeah, not for a while. I, I definitely want to see. What, what's the time through. frame on that, by the way, what is the. Here to retirement. What is it? What is it? Well, I'm forty. Years, I'm forty-seven. Yeah, I'm forty-seven. So seven years till I'm fifty-five, and that would be like the 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 end all. I want to get through coaching my last son. I want to get through coaching justice, and we have a really good group of kids coming up through. And that's the bad thing. We've been so successful that anytime I'm thinking I want to be done, then I look at what's coming next, and I'm like, I can't leave them because I'm, I'm I want to be loyal to the kids who are on the in the program. And so it's, it's over the last several years, I, I've had to make some commitment to some kids, but then we have fifth and sixth graders who are like, Hey, I'm going to wrestle for you. And I want to say, well, I don't know if you are, I, I don't know, but I, like I, I would eventually you and Eric like Burnett be- got the same sickness. You and J- Eric Burnett got the same sickness. Yeah. You, he's probably done in two years. If I'm taking a guess, Nate, Nate dog junior. Son. Yep. Right. Just what justice is a sophomore. sophomore. It's okay to be done in three years. I don't know if anybody's told you that yet. I'm sure your wife has, but it's uh, okay. There's she's told me that it. for 20 years. So. You'll be, you'll be 50. You'll be 50. And then you can travel. If he decides to wrestle or whatever he decides to do, and you can be dad and go yell into a microphone. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but it's your life. You know, you ultimately define it, right? Like you're going to do what you're going to do, but yeah, it's okay to be done in three years. I'm okay with you doing that. It's it's thank you. I'm going to call you in three years and I'll be like, Zeb, what do you think? Well, because, I'm be like, come and coach my kids. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I, I'm still at a point. Uh, I haven't wrestled live or even done hard drilling in 10, 12 years. I, I, I can't, my body hurts it's, for it's, two weeks. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm 41 and I challenged, well, I didn't challenge. I was like, Hey, Wyatt, I got a nephew who's a, uh, Senior at Oak Harbor. And he's a Gerald Ty, he's a killer. <laughs> but wait, the wait. number one guy in Ohio at 190. So he wrestled pounds. the Cornell guy to double OT last yeah, year. Yeah, right? him and the Cornell guy have great matches. They go double OT to, last year. Oh, the, the, the one who's going from Oregon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from uh, uh, Bellevue. Bellevue. You're a great Wars, kid, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Justin Mays, great kid. Yeah. Yeah. Him and this Bellevue guy go to war a lot. Him and the, the last two matches have been overtime. Uh, last one, uh, 
Bellevue guy rode him out in the, the ultimate tie break. And, oh. but, but he's a killer. He's big. Right. He's gigantic. He's 200 pounds. He might be like 190 to 200 and he's just a freak. And my brother was a state champ. My brother knows yeah. how to wrestle. My brother Tate's he's tougher than a boiled owl. He's tougher than how. And oh, um, boiled owl. I've never yeah. heard that one. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Roberts, Roberts Moffat special, North Idaho, uh, Spokane, Washington special. I can't claim that one, but we wrestle <laughs> Millerism. And he was hitting me oh. with like sweep singles. And he's a lefty. <laughs> oh my God. It's just like, like one time he had me, it was so nice, man. He got me and I hopped once and I'm like, screw this. And I just, yeah. I just, I turned down. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to fight him. I'm not going to like, I could fight him here, lock in the crotch. We could roll and I roll and break my whatever, whatever. Your whole, whole, pelvis, your, 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 your whole pelvis would be shattered. Yeah. Break my whole thing. Pel- pelvis <laughs> that ties it all together. The <laughs> legs with the upper torso. <laughs> Right. Like the hardest thing to break that in the femur, I could have broken both in one shot. But then I talked to him about it this weekend and he's like, and he was like, well, you're big, you're 250 pounds. So he's like, you know, I got to be careful because you could hurt me too, which is real possible. Yeah. Then where would I be? Where would I be if I hurt my nephews in the senior year going to try to win a state title? Yeah. It'd be a real piece of garbage move. You know what I mean? So I just, he can beat me up in March after the state tournament. That's okay. I, I'm all right with that. I mean, he beat me up that day, but <laughs> And he's like, he, he wrestles really hard. He's going to go wrestle for, for my nephew, Ian at app state and John Mark Bentley. Yeah. You know, and he's a, he's a guy that really feels like he can make a difference on the team and be a good D one guy. I think he's a multiple time D two all American, but I'm with you. I'm with, it's just like, you, it's goal. Point, you don't wrestle anymore. You know, it hurts. Like, and then if a kid like calls you out, sometimes, Depends what direction the wind's blowing that day. Maybe you want to like check your pride. I don't know. I don't know. I stopped. I stopped checking my pride 15 years ago. I was still. But you're smart. Yeah, but I was still wrestling a little bit alive. But it, but I would get to a place and I would let, and I would let them score, or I'd put them in. We have a couple guys. You know, you put them in the right place. You let them beat you a little bit. But then I started to really hurt. And I can still show technique and I can still do clinics and I can still have fun. But, but in a, if you got to transition from one thing to another, oh. boy, it just, I say, I need to be there. And then like two seconds later, I still need to be there. And I just can't get there as fast as I used to get there. <laughs> it's called father time. Oh, yeah. Father he, time is undefeated. And I promise you, Jared, do you wrestle anymore? Um, so I believe it or not, you know, wrestled since kindergarten, no injuries, uh, brothers, dad, all had shoulders done. Uh, I think two hand, they've had two hands, both had knees. I think actually all three brothers had both shoulders. What? I haven't had a stitch and about five. I, I just realized that, you know, they're father times on the feet. So I don't go. Cause it's like, you know, it's just a matter of time. I, I mean, yeah. but I don't have any ego to prove and you know, I have nothing. To, I, I'll show technique and stuff, but you know, I used to go live, but you know, I, I'll go drill once in a while, but you know, Drew still gets in and wrestles and now his shoulders and necks are all, it's like, that, oh. for what, you know, that we got, <laughs> you know, for what? Yeah. You got a job, you got a family. For, if for, you get hurt, you got to take time away from for what? Work. Yeah, I have nothing to prove. You know, I want to yeah. roll out of bed. You know, I, I, yeah. Who can say they went through D one five years and no surgeries. Right. I don't know. Not this and I mean, I'm almost 40 now. I'm they're going to come eventually, but I'm not going to ex- expedite that process. No, why would you? Why would you? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, Hazard, I like your advice. It's great advice. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I'll tell you what, I'm not in as bad a shape as I thought I was in. I thought I would be like, uh, like mm-hmm. crawl off the mat, vomit. None of that. None of that. I was okay. My last time. I, and I hadn't done it in a long time. And this kid on my team just pushed and pushed and pushed. He was a little guy too. He was like 126 pounder and pushed and pushed. He goes, I'm going to whoop your, you know, whoop your tail. I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to whoop you. So finally one day I was like, let's go. And you, you can't, you know, punch a kid obviously. And, you, and I'm, <laughs> I'm 180. I was at the, I'm a little heavier now, but I was probably 185 pounds at the time. And I couldn't lay on the kid. He's a little guy, right? Um, 
So I was trying to hold back. And then I went, I'm going down. And I go high turn in and I landed on my head and my fingers went numb. And I was like, that was so dumb. Why not just stand up? I'm going to go turn in and land on my neck. And, and since then I got home and my wife was like, you are a dumb fool. And, and I just haven't, but now I want to ski and stuff too. And I know that I'm just going to get hurt doing that. That's true. There's yeah. I mean, I'm going to go jump on the trampoline such... out back and I'm going to go, you know, do something stupid. So. But there's so much higher of a likelihood than getting hurt and getting hurt wrestling, oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. That other stuff that sure it's like going to be freaky ish wrestling it's like the other person's trying to hurt you oh and you think you can do it right in your reaction times you know, yeah oh you yeah when well, he was like shooting on me there. he was shooting on me i got a post and he hit me with like a boot scoot and i just yeah. fell down <laughs> do you have video do you have video oh yeah i've got video of it i gotta i gotta share it because we went a couple of times i think he got me two takedowns and another time i got him in a front headlock and i, I could have just choked him out and i'm like what kind of person am I if I choke my nephew? Right. right. <laughs> he's Uncle gonna Zab. hate my guts. He's gonna hate my guts. I don't want the dude to hate my guts. I love him. Yeah, you know, what's, it's what's like, the end goal here, right? You gotta yeah, I'm like, what really? I'm gonna choke Wyatt out. What kind of guy am I? And Wyatt's he's a really awesome kid. He's yeah, a nice, really right. nice kid. Hundred percent. Awesome I can kid. remember the first time, and I was probably a sophomore in high school, and my dad was a good wrestler. I mean, he was he was a JUCO all American and NCAA qualifier back in the oh, day wow. and he was, he was, I mean, he was, he was good, but I remember the day where I took him down like five times in the backyard and he was so upset and he worked out for like a month and then he was finally like, screw it. Why am I doing this? It's just so I can beat my son. That's yeah. Right. He figured it out. Yeah. But he still scares me and he's, you know, <laughs> 72 years old. I still like, yes, sir. So uh, awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff. Hey, Jared. I want to do a quick shout out to our guy, Josh mm-hmm. and uh, our barbarian, our partner talk. Uh, we've got a new partner who just came on board with, I, I don't know if you've listened to the very hilarious Zach Bogle and stalemates. He's now with barbarian apparel. Um, you can get the, the hoodies. You can get the Iowa state van t-shirt. Jacket, he's got it jackets, all everything yeah. he's got the jackets you name it he's got it. he's got like a windbreaker right now yeah. so yeah quick shout out to uh www.barbarianapparel.com josh sassfeet barbarian, Appar- barbarian apparel slash ba ba hour for the specials yeah the, we got a special link. for us i yeah. believe stalemates has got a special we've got a special if you use our promotional code i think you get what what do you get what's the is there no he's a, a single special ba slash BA hour. Go to the website. BA hour. You get a single Slash special. It. So yep. that's awesome. Use that. Josh is the man. Uh, I know that uh, Coach Hazard will definitely attest to his mopping skills. They're he next can, level. He can get it. He can get it. He can mop. Man, he, he was he was so proud of it. He was like, "Video me, me. Give video me. Look at how good I am at this." Now he's awesome. <laughs> and Greco stud. Like he loves Greco. He loves Greco. Yeah. We, we were yeah. just watching the card uh, this past Saturday. We had a tournament up here in Sandusky, and he was there. And uh, we were watching the card, and uh, he's like, they, they, they ain't mopping like me. You know, he was, he's nope. proud. Yeah. <laughs> he brought oh, yeah. it. <laughs> and that was Malinconico's son. And he was like, he's not doing it as good as, as well as I am. He, he was a mopping he's, machine. He's 13. He's 13. Yeah. <laughs> you are They're a grown fast. man who They're owns fast. a business with a new new one-year-old child. So right. I uh, – yeah. And, and uh, you sponsor several athletes who are world class, so maybe you should mop better than them. I love that he's getting, uh, you know, contracts with small countries and big countries. He, yeah. he is marketing it well. Dude, he kicks Some, by. It's awesome. Sometimes it's hard to get in on the United States time, but man, once you're in, you're in. Uh, but the, the 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 barbarian apparel is really nice stuff. Yeah, Denmark. Denmark is one of his countries. Yep. All of the Northern European countries. Yep. I remember seeing them uh, at the at the Olympics in, in Rio. Yep. And I was like, oh my God, Josh has tons of singlets on so Olympians' cool. backs. Like he had these full, he had a bunch of like the Northern European countries. And uh, we well, had that Madson guy, right? Mark Madson, who was an Olympic yes, was yes. runner up and he was wearing he BA apparel. Now. Yeah. So yeah, Josh does a great job. I'm just glad to have a partner like him on the show. I'm glad we can have a guest like you, a high quality pinnacle 
the man who called the match of the century. What was your favorite match you've called? Was that your match, your favorite match you've called? Or what kind of, is there any matches stand out? Um, I will tell you the, the, the one that stands out the most, the worlds were amazing. Uh, and they were almost like surreal, but Jason and I got the call um, to do our first NCAA championships and they were at Madison square garden. And, you know, you get that call to be in the most famous arena in the world, right. To, to do these events with uh, the best sound system, the best everything, but that's some pressure. And you're, you're, you're taking over for a legend, you know, many legends. So you have, you know, Al Alberti and Sandy and, and, and all these people who have come before you and, and, um, and, and Todd Hibbs and, Todd Hibbs. And, yeah, yeah, awesome dude. He man. used to announce our events back in the day. Uh, here so deep. His voice OEC, is, yeah. is so fantastic. Yeah. But um, and then it's two young, well, not young, I'm old, but two young people of the sport who are doing this for the first time, and you don't want to screw it up. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh doing the, the Madison Square Garden one was was pretty amazing. Um and that was the the Kyle Snyder Nick Wisdowski final, oh. our last match, and it was uh it was awesome. Um, and, you know, you, you lose your voice because you're just going the whole time and you want to be powerful the whole time. But I will tell you a great story. And a lot of people know this story and, and you might know it. Um, but there are a bunch of yahoos who are our friends and more Jason's friends, but I've known them forever. Um, and they had gotten a luxury suite and they always do. And they would text us before every session and they would give us seven or eight words that we had to throw in to the announcing without over being overbearing. Right. Words like machete, avocado, lasagna. <laughs> um, I remember those. Sashimi, like all these different, and all these different words that we had to be like, we had to Getting weave in them in. Sub- Bucktown. Subtly, right? Yeah. Uh, and and they were they were all kind of meaningful in some way, and uh, so. We came down to the last one was sashimi. <laughs> You're just crossing them off as you go. And we would, we would cross them off and they would text us. There it was. And so we didn't know how we were going to do it. And I would get more nervous about these words. And so I'm ready. And we're trying, like we're playing each other. And so we were on an end cap at, at Madison Square Garden. And it was like Matt six. And, uh, and you go, you possible fall on mat number six. And they call the fall. And I just said, sashimi. <laughs> and no one could figure it out except you could hear them. Uh, in, they were uh, kind of right above, above us in the, in the luxury box. It's like, <sighs> and so we, we'd have a little inside joke about uh, that now. But, it. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. And then the NCAA caught wind of it. And they didn't care at first, but they just we didn't want to be on camera. We didn't want to do a lot of things because obviously we're just a piece of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and we don't want to be the show. Obviously the show is, it's an easy show to be a part of. Um, but those type of little things, Jason and I have a lot of fun together and, and we laugh and, you know, we have a pretty good little, uh, way that we do things where none of us are in a pissing contest trying to be better than right, the other. Right. If someone's alongside, you got to be comfortable with them. Right. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. It's a, yeah, it's a good time, but I yeah, love so it. If you, ever, if you ever hear that, if you ever hear the, you know, the, the, the sashimi, it's, it's yeah. not, yeah. it's not disrespecting anyone. It's just what we do. What, and fall. if you can do that, you can do anything, right? <laughs> you can say, if I can say sashimi in front of, you know, 30,000 fans, I can say just about damn anything. <laughs> I love it. That's I awesome. love it. Uh, well, Coach Hazard, thanks for coming on. Brian Hazard's the man, the man, thanks the myth, the me. legend. I was excited when I when I got uh, when I Jared, I got your text and your email, and I was just like, ah, it's so much fun. Right? No, it's uh, awesome, awesome. And yeah, I knew you'd be a good, have some good stories and and uh, some good takes on the sport. So thank you. It, it uh, still is and always will be, even with a lot of the craziness right now. By far the greatest thing to do, the greatest thing to watch, the greatest thing to be a part of um, and whatever 
you know, whatever piece that we all play is, is, is an important piece. And I, I love it. Well, thank you. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate it. Man, I appreciate you.